Well, um, it's so amazing and uh, music is a food for the soul and today we are excited to come your way with another documentary and as you can see, I have here a saw. This is known as the musical saw. It is not different from the saw our carpenters use and it is an amazing musical instrument it dates back somewhere the 1919 when this musical instrument was discovered but it will surprise you to know that here in africa um, you don't see a lot of people or a lot of um, churches or a lot of musical groups a lot of orchestra groups playing this kind of musical instrument it's so amazing and i know most of you this is your first time of watching a video scene a carpenter saw producing notes and according to history this is called the musical saw and it can produce about 16 to 20 notes yes 16 to 20 notes this musical saw can produce sound and as you heard us playing uh, your favorite hymn i know you are enjoying and you want to know much about this i have here Ebushiapini Asante Dako, who has been playing this for a long time. Say you are welcome. Thank you. Okay, so it's called a musical saw. It's definitely so. Why, why, why is it musical saw? Uh, because we know, as for this saw, because this, what I have in my hand and what you have there, is no different from what carpenters use, right? The same thing. The same thing. Because with this one, I can see the teeth here. But it seems it's been filed off. So yes, so it's not different from what carpenters use. So um, yourself, how long have you been playing this? Um, I've, I played this since for almost about um, two decades. Two decades. Yes. Almost about forty years, yes, and he's been playing this. Um, who taught you how to play this? Because in fact, a lot of people this is their first time seeing music as well. Um, who taught you 40 years ago? Who taught you how to play this? Um, according to history or what I knew, it was uh, one Reverend Utubuatin who brought it from Germany. First time in Ghana. First time in Ghana. Was Reverend Utubuatin. Utubuatin. It's no more. Okay. He died a long time ago. Okay. But he taught about four people. Okay. And before he died? Before he died. Was he playing? He was also playing. Oh, yes. Right? Okay. He's a renowned musician. He was a renowned musician. Okay. He wrote so many songs and plays the organ very well. Very, okay. very well. He's a, and he's a, a Presbyterian. A okay. One Presbyterian. Okay. He taught one police officer. Okay. By name S. V. Kumi. Okay. And he taught me how to play this organ. Okay, so the police officer taught you 40 years ago. Yes, 40 years ago. You met him somewhere and he was playing. Uh, how was it he like? He came to um, visit somebody at Nkoko. He came to a memorial service and I met him. And he was playing it? He was playing it. And mm -hmm. he said, I, wa I want to learn it. And he said, I will teach you. So it took me one hour. He taught me how to play just one hour. Because I am already a musician and I have the years. So okay. I picked up. 
and you started playing. I started playing. Um, uh, most of uh, the people watching us right now around the world, uh, especially currently, we are here in a crew point in the eastern region of Ghana, and this is where you are. We have not seen a lot of people playing this musical instrument. Is it that popular? Is it a popular musical instrument? Well, it is not popular in Ghana. Okay. But if you go to European countries, so there are a lot of players. If you, if you like, if you click a, uh, you click a YouTube. And I search for musical. I search for musical, so you see a lot of players. But here in Ghana, why are people not playing this? Well, unless who, who wants to learn. But it's like we don't see people playing. We see people playing the organ in the churches, but it seems this one. There yeah, are a lot of musicians. Even when you go to art center, you seldom find a musical show because yes. it's not common. Yes, even when you go to our musical shops here, mm -hmm. you will not see anyone selling. No. Okay, so how different is this saw from what the carpenters use? Uh, it is the same saw with the exception that uh, unless you have the one with, with tension, it's pure sale. Okay, so it has to it, be a steel. A steel. A saw manufactured. bend easily. You okay. See? Uh, flexible bending. Okay. Then you, you get that sound. You, okay. Mm -hmm. Ooh, okay, so it has to be a saw. Most which is, of the saws are uh, hardened with um, carbon and uh, what it casts. That is not the best saw to That's use. That is not the best saw to use. Okay. But you have to get the one with steel, pure steel. So, so that if you, when you bend it, it cannot break. Okay. Oh. How old is this your saw? As I told you, I had it over 40 years ago. And you've kept it for 40 years? Yes. So you mean this saw is 40 years? Oh More my God. More than 40 years. More than 40 <laughs> years. <laughs> okay, let me ask you, does the size matter to produce the sound? The size of the saw? Does it matter? No. Okay. But... When it is long, as like say, when you go to the piano fort, you find about two octaves, three octaves, five octaves, and even seven octaves. Yeah. You see? So the, length, the longer the instrument, the, the, the more of the sound you will get. Okay. So if it is short, you can't play higher or lowest note. Okay. When, when it is short. But when it's long, you can get all these notes along. Okay. You have 12 keys. You yeah. can get all of them when it is longer. When the saw is longer. Okay. Uh -huh. when, but when it is short, you, you can go about only two or two and a half octaves. I can see you are playing the musical saw with a bow. A bow. Yeah. Is it the same we use for the violin? And the cello, is it the same thing? The same thing you use for violin and cello. But the best is the cello bowls. Okay. Yes. The best is the cello bowls. Wow. Can this musical instrument, can you use it to play any song? Or is it just meant for hymns and songs that have low tempos? Um, proper, um, definitely, it is meant for uh, songs like church hymns. The one they play in the churches, you see, and uh, the one with keys. So as soon as you see the key, you come in, or you hear the key, you just come in. Um, a friend of mine was asking me. He was like, "I can play the piano, but talking about music also, mm. how are you able to know this is key C, key D, uh, this G?" You always determine it by the years. As soon as you, if you are a good musician, as soon as you strike the note, it's that you must know that it, this is key C or G. But on the keyboard, mm -hmm. there is a tone, of there course. is a semitone. So it's better you play with a keyboardist or a pianist. Is it possible to play alone? It's it's, it is possible to play alone, but it is hard to determine the key you are using unless you use a pitch pipe. Okay, so with the pitch pipe, mm -hmm. you'll be able to tell the key you are it's playing. E or, or C or G. So when you start to play, 
and the keyboardist doesn't tell you the key, you, the player, will not be able to tell to use it. No, as soon as I hear from him, I can just come in at the same time and come on the same note as I hear by the ear. You get me? I get you. Okay, so um, uh, if, you, if you are on any of our social media platforms, just make sure you subscribe to the channel, you like and you leave a comment. Um, I don't know if you can take us to... Is there any history behind this musical song? All that uh, I learned was that uh, in Europe, there was a carpenter who hangs his saw on the wall. Just like we have this here, so... You see, this has a hole. So he has a day where he hangs them on the wall. But uh, mistakenly, it fell from where it hanged. As soon as he touches the ground, he touched the ground, he heard a noise. Mm. This is a peculiar sound. So he used his hammer and tried it and saw that he can get some notes from the saw. So he tried it and had it. So that was how it was originated. Okay, my my producer has a favorite hymn that he wants us to. What's the title? Oh, yeah. Yesu Mejefo. Okay, so um, my producer loves this hymn and wants to play it on the musical so, so just enjoy it. Okay, so that was an interesting one, playing uh, the music I saw. Um, currently, I don't know whether you know, I don't know, what are you doing? Um, after one song, you have to rub the bow, the hairs of the bow with a rosin. A rosin? A rosin, yes. What does it do? It gives the saw and produces the sound. If you don't use the rosin, it will slip. Ooh, the, okay. the, the brush will slip from this, so, so that the music will not, okay. the, the tune will not come. Ooh, okay, so it is good that you have this to play. The rosin. Always you have to rub the bow with the rosin. Okay, um, apart from yourself, because for most of us, this is the first time, and most people, this is the first time they've seen such an amazing musical instrument. Um, apart from yourself, do you know other people who play? Uh, I knew one guy who says a tema. Okay. Oh, Mr. Um, forgetting the name. Okay. He, and I have taught some people. Okay. So apart, I, he 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 also plays. Yes, he plays at the. What do you call it? The mm -hmm. LDA Church. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Mr. Dennis. 
Uwaki. Yes, yes, yes. he plays that. Atema, yes. Uwaki. It means the musical, this one is not popular in Ghana. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, some, I knew, those whom I knew who were, who were playing are all dead. So if we don't mm -hmm. take care, we are going to lose this musical instrument here in Ghana. I'm yet teaching some people, so I don't think it will fade out. Oh, I, I, I share. Yes. It's not going to fade out. No. But those you are teaching, is the interest there? Because, you know, everybody wants to learn how to play the bass, guitar, the keyboard, the drums. Most of my people, who, if the people who came to me are very, very much interested in playing the song. Wow. So I, I have hope that it will not be lost. Okay, yourself. So how old are you now? Currently, I'm um, 87 years. 87 years. And you spent about 40 years of your time <laughs> playing this. So, oh my God. So. <laughs> okay. Um, we, will, uh, we will play another hymn and then I'll talk to my uh, organist as well. Uh, so uh, I don't know which of the hymns you are going to play. Uh, okay. So Presbyterian hymn 521. Enjoy this one too. Okay, so let me uh, talk to uh, my uh, organist. Uh, as you can see, while the Bruce Alpini, uh, was playing the uh, musical, so there was another organ uh, at the background, and I have the player here. What's your name? My name is Paul. Okay, Paul. Yes. You've been playing the keyboard. How long have you also been playing the keyboard? Yes. I've been playing the keyboard for approximately 15 years now. Oh, 15 years. Yes. Oh, my God. <laughs> And you know, when it comes to hymns, normally it is very difficult to see young people playing hymns. Everybody wants to play for the orthodox, they want to play, you know. Uh, why did you choose this line? Yes, playing hymns makes you a distinct keyboardist, okay. When you play high live and so on, you just play by the ear. But with the hymns, you have to follow. Look at really? the notes, yes. Play exactly what you see in the book. Aha. Uh -huh. So it leads you and guides you to play the right notes. Hold on, you, you, you cannot made, just play anyhow. <laughs> you made a serious statement. Exactly. You are saying when you play her life. Yes. Come again. You just play just what comes into mind, how the song goes, the rhythm. You okay. follow just like that. But with the hymn, you play note by note without missing a note. Else the song wouldn't sound the same as it was written. So, with her life and the songs we play in Pentecostals and contemporary music, just backing. Bam, bam. You are just playing. Yes, you can even backing. hit the wrong note and you exactly. are, you you are good through. to go. <laughs> you move on. <laughs> That's it. But with, with hymns, it's a distinct area. You just have to follow what is in the book. So, you play note by note, exactly as it is written. Yes. So, when you play, I mean hymns, it makes you... A fantastic keyboardist. And so, yes. so keyboardists who cannot play hymns, they are not good. They are equally good, but not as compared to those who play hymns. Because if you ask me, I will tell you those who play hymns are musically good than those who don't play hymns. But yes. this is a serious statement. Yeah. Yes, that's my opinion, though, and I think it is proven. Because even if you want to learn the keyboard, you just cannot learn by the ear. You have to learn by the notes. So it will tell you, okay, this is E, this is D, this is C, this is F. And you are learning the notes. So you want to play chords, maybe you combine E flat, D sharp, and then this and that, you get this note. So you learn by the note what is in the book. Uh -huh. So if you get to a point and you don't play by what is in the book again, then where are you, are you heading towards? Um, most people who play most of the hymn, uh, chords and those things, I see them with a score. But you are playing without a score. Yes. Simply because I've been playing for a long time. And those are normal songs I used to play, so I have them in mind. I can play off head. Okay, without the score. Yes, yes. You'll be able to tell the notes and everything. Exactly. With no mistakes. With no mistakes. With no mistakes. So if Equally, if I have the, the, the book 
in front of me to guide me as well, but without it, because I've been playing for a long time, I have them in memory, which I can play off head. So how many hymns do you have off head? Oh, this will be actually difficult for me to tell. Depending on, I mean, eh, any song or any hymn you bring up, quickly, I'll try to uh, process it and then. Is it, are you, are you limited to Presbyterian hymns? Oh, Or you cut okay. across? I can say so, but because I'm strictly a Presbyterian, I'm much more familiar with Presbyterian hymns, which I can play more off head than other 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 church hymnaries. Because with that one, I have to get the book. Or you refer yes. to the score and yeah, get exactly. the notes. Yes. So any hymn you can play off head, depending. If it is Presbyterian, I have no problem at all. So you've been playing for the past fifteen years. Exactly. Okay. So now let me ask you. Why did you limit yourself to hymns? Because I don't know whether you, you still stand by your definition you gave oh. me that you want to be distinct, you want to be unique. <sighs> okay, me personally, I'm not limited to only hymns. I play all around. Okay. I play high life, I play chora, I play everything. Depending on where I find myself and where you put me, I'll be able to deliver. Okay. But I'm more into the hymns because I think that is a distinct area. And it, and it comes with more of respect. If you play hymns, mm -hmm. you sit behind the organ with a note. I mean, they start in front of it you. It comes with respect. With respect. Okay. Because obviously, when you are playing hymns and somebody comes and he's a by heart player, he salutes you. you because be he by heart player. Not do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it. So, Serious punchline. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Respect. When he, he respects you. Exactly. Exactly. Wow. Okay. Because though he can play by heart, but if you give him the book, the stuff to play, it will be challenging. That's it. You know, I'm one of the by heart players. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me tell you a story. Obviously, you're offended. Uh, no, I'm not offended, <laughs> but I'm feeling guilty now. I, I went to the voter region okay. for a friend's funeral, and the father was actually dead. So, Saturday morning, we were supposed to go for burial service in a church. I was asleep and then I didn't want to go for the bar. I want them to go and bury the father and come back so that I can go to the funeral grounds. So I was asleep and my friend came to woke me up. Charlie, they need a keyboard, somebody to come and play. Yeah, oh, Charlie, come and play for us. I said, well, no, I'm not ready. Come and play. So I thought it was a Pentecostal church mm. where I, they were saying, uh, your bone, Sam, so, and I play my pen and I go. Yeah. <laughs> I went there. I got there and then the choir master said, oh, you can play. And then he opened the score for me. Then I stood there, I'm like, ah. What is it? <laughs> I'm like, ah, please, I don't play a, I don't play a word song. He said, no, but they're not. <laughs> That's my point. Hey, That's the point. I told the man, I don't play a word song. So, oh, but you can read. Uh -huh. I said, no, oh, you can read. Then you can play our songs. Yeah, I'm justified now. So if I was able to play that day, but they gave me the the the, the score and I was like I don't play away songs. Uh -huh. So that is clearly the <laughs> distinction between those who play by heart and those who play by 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 the score. Yeah. Jesus, from today I'll start learning uh, hymns. Yes, it helps. Ha yeah, yeah, from today, from today, mm -hmm. I'll start learning hymns. Okay, let's do another hymn so that I will console myself a little bit. Um, I don't know which one we are playing. Jesus shall reign. Okay. Jesus shall reign. So.
Wow. Wow. So, um, so currently you play for a, a one church, eh? Yes, play I play for a corporate Christ Presby right. Church. Okay. Yes. Okay. As a principal organist. Okay. Wow. Oh, wow. So, um, as I mentioned, we are at a Pim Ekropon where we are engaging uh, people who are well vested into music. We have the musicals and then we have the organ here. So, as uh, he mentioned, he can play any other song. So, in my case, if it were to be you, you could have played. In terms of? In my case, when I went to there and they brought me exactly. away him. Exactly. <laughs> the moment I had the score to guide me, exactly. I'm good to go. Even if you don't know the song. Yes. 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 I told them I don't play away. The away songs are written in the notes. Yes. So the songs are written in the notes. Yes, yes. Just notes. So it doesn't matter the lyrics. So it tells whether you whether it is Greek or whatever. It tells you the the, the, the it tells you the time signature. Everything. Everything, the notes and everything, yes. and you are yes. good to go. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Wow. And you were asking Papa a question that why are the young ones not learning? Everybody wants to play an yeah. electronic instrument and so on and so on. Yes. Uh, if you look at this, I would say it's not an enticing. Yes. But they're very fantastic instruments with a soothing sound. Okay. But the young guys of today, they want electronic instruments. Sure. The one they can hear. I mean, the, the output very yes. loud and so on and so forth. But if you ask me, if you want to be a good musician, you don't have to limit yourself in playing just one musical instrument. Myself, I play the organ, I play the bass guitar, and I'm as well a drummer. And I'm in the process of learning the saw as well. Okay. So it makes you an all-round player. It makes you a fantastic player. Everywhere you find yourself, you fit. Okay. So I will encourage and urge everyone to develop that interest in learning the music as well. It doesn't take that much long time to learn. Very simple. The moment you are quite musically inclined, inclined. you are good to go. Within a space of just a day or two, or two, when you are guided, you are able to do something. So it's such a fantastic instrument, yeah, which I will mean, encourage everybody to. Because the young ones, the moment Everybody wants, you see them hanging bees, acoustics, uh -huh, acoustic they are yeah, <laughs> everywhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you carry saw and uh, so, okay, we are playing another hymn. Thank you. 
Okay, so um, people have this perception that if you are a singer, you should learn at least one musical instrument. Do you uh, also believe in that? That if you are a singer and you sing, you should at least learn one musical instrument? Uh, eh, eh. It's good, but not that a necessity. Okay. Okay. It's it is good. not necessary. It's, it's, it's not a necessity. But okay, so let's let me let me let me reframe. If you are, for instance, a high life musician, okay. you are a gospel musician, you need to learn how to play a musical instrument, at least one musical instrument. Yeah, if if you ask me, I'll say it is good, but not a requirement. Okay. Not a requirement. Because if at least you are you are able to play the organ in your leisure time alone, you can do something, you can rehearse something. And then you can just get your team together because you've been able to do something on your own with a keyboard. You're able to help the organist, okay, do it this way, this way, that way, and then it will help you to at least do your thing very well. But if you don't know, I don't think it's much of a problem. And at least, again, if you know the keyboard, for instance, it will help your pitching. Okay. Voice rehearsal. So, so at least you can rehearse, uh -huh, on your own. rehearse on your own. You don't need someone to touch the notes for you. This exactly. is do, this exactly. is gray. Okay. And then, okay, it can also help you to at least identify the keys you are very comfortable with, depending on the song. Okay. You see, when 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 some musicians, I mean, I mean, go on the stage, they fumble a little bit because they are not comfortable with the key they've been giving and all that. Mm. But if you're able to rehearse on your own with the guide of the keyboard and so on. I mean, when you go on stage or you get your team, you're able to give them your key, which you are comfortable with, and the kind of song you've been able to rehearse with the keyboard, and then it will flow very well. Okay. So I would say it is good. It helps you develop very fast, but it's not that a requirement that uh, strictly you should know how to play. Does, does, does it improve your composition? Yes, yes. It improves your composition because if you know at least one instrument, I'll take the keyboard for instance. When you sit behind the keyboard, what you can sing with your voice, it is not the same thing you can play on the keyboard. Sometimes you accidentally play something, you wouldn't know it was correct, but when you played it and it sounded very well, it's, ah, I can add this. So it will all help you, I mean, get a very good composition. Okay, so as I said, Maybe you are trying something and accidentally you play something. Hey, this sounds very well, very good. Then you add it. But when you are singing with your raw voice, you can't get that advantage there. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. So um, let's come to uh, and said, So um, at your age, you are still playing. You still play the keyboard as well. Of course. Um, if someone wants you to teach the music also, are you willing to teach? Because most people would want to learn this musical instrument. With our pleasure, I will. Why would you want to teach people? Well, I don't want the, the instrument to die away. It means you are very passionate about this musical of instrument. Why? What is and so it's you so mean? handy. You can take it anywhere. anywhere. It's so handy. It's unlike the... Uh, uh, organ, you have to carry a very big, huge thing. You but need an adapter. Uh, uh, if there is no light. You just need the, the saw, your bow, and the resin. That's all. And you are good to go. Wow. So I'm putting a picture uh, on, on the screen right now. You check that uh, people uh, outside in America, there are some people who are even on the streets playing musical instruments and people are just giving them money. You can see from the video we have on the screen right now that people are on the streets and they sit down, they play the musical instrument and you can see the people gathered around them. They are so much uh, shocked that hey, a musical, uh, a saw is producing that kind of sound and people are just giving money. So uh, Mr. Dan we are going. I don't know what is your final words and then you give us your last name. Uh. My advice to the youth is that uh, you should come out in the enormous and learn. Okay. So that the, the soul will not die away. You don't want the soul no. to die away in Ghana here? <laughs> yes. I want it to stay. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay. But yet, uh, 
I'm happy I have about three or four people who are eager to learn. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, my son, the organist, Darko, is very willing and he plays about not only the organ. Yeah. Even I have a mandolin, he can play it well, very, very well. Mm. Wow. So it's not only the keyboard, keyboard only he can, he can okay. play the other, other music, musical instruments too. Wow. And I'm happy he wants to learn the saw too. And sooner or later, he'll be a very good uh, musical saw player. Wow. Okay, so sir, what, you know, I don't know which of the uh, hymns you want, you want to leave us with. So, um, as you watch the video, if you have not subscribed to our channel on YouTube, please kindly subscribe to the channel, leave a comment, and then you like the video, you share the video for others to also have the opportunity to uh, have access please to this yeah. video. And then, um, remember we came all the way to the eastern region of Ghana, Ekrapeme uh, Kropon, where we had this exclusive interview. So, enjoy this amazing instrument. Uh, musical saw and then we have the organ and enjoy this scene. Bye bye.